Hi, 7th graders. Welcome to video lesson 2.2, Adding and Subtracting Rational Numbers. In this video, we're going to add and subtract fractions, and we're going to add and subtract decimals. Um, please be sure you take um, a sufficient amount of notes, uh, because this video will be quite lengthy. So what we're going to learn today, if we take a look at our essential question, is how does adding and subtracting rational numbers compare with adding and subtracting integers. And um, if we take a moment, go back through your notes and review um, how we add and subtract integers. Remember, when the signs are the same, we add, keep the sign, and when the signs are different, we subtract the absolute values and keep the sign of the larger number. So what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to use a number line to find the sum of 2 and 7 tenths plus negative 3.4. So we're going to do this on a number line. <clears throat> so the first thing we're going to do is start at 0 and move 2.7 units to the right. So if you notice from 0 to 1. So if we uh, take a look here between any whole number, say 0 to 1, these lines are broken up into 10 smaller units. So that means from 0 if I go to this first small line, that's one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths. Then we go on to six, seven, eight, nine tenths, and we get one whole right here. And it continues in both directions. What just happened? It continues in both directions um, in such a fashion. So it says start at zero and move 2.7 units. So here's one, here's two, and then I want to count seven little lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So here's 2.7. Then we're going to add to this negative 3.4. So from here, I'm going to go left three units. So we're going to go three units back and we're going to count one whole, two whole, three whole, and then we need to go down seven, uh, four tenths of a unit. And that brings us to a final answer of negative seven tenths. An easier way to do that, if you don't want to use a number line, since the signs are different, take 3.4 and subtract 2.7. We borrow 14 minus seven is seven, 2 minus 2 is 0. This here is my larger number, so I get an answer of negative 7 tenths. And there's your solution if you are hating the number line. <clears throat> now what we're going to do is we're going to use a number line. Remember, there's 10 units between each whole number. And we're going to solve the problems that are circles. So the next couple pages, you'll see circled problems. That's the question we're doing. So 3 tenths plus negative 9 tenths. So what we're going to do first is take our common denominator, 10, and above it put our numerators, 3 plus negative 9. Since the denominators are the same, we can just evaluate, solve the numerator. Are my signs the same in the numerator or are they different? So since they're different, we're going to just subtract 9 minus 3 and we get 6. And since 9 is the bigger um, number, final answer of negative 6 over 9. Sorry, did I say 9? Negative 6 over 10. My apologies. And from here, let's reduce. Let's break it down to its simplest form. I can take both of these numbers, divide by 2, and we get an answer of negative 3 negative 3 over 5. <clears throat> Example C, we have negative 6 over 10 minus 1 and 1 third. What we need to make sure is that you make the uh, mixed number improper. So we get negative 6 minus negative 13 and I'm sure some of you are wondering where that 13 came from. If I take 1 and 3 over 10, I want to write that as an improper fraction. To do that, 
I'm going to take 10 and multiply it to the whole number 1. So 10 times 1 is 10, and then I'm going to add 3. 10 plus 3 is 13 over 10. And remember, it's negative. Well, minus. Okay, so there's a mistake in that work that I just showed you. So I'm going to do it with you live. So we have negative 6. Negative 6 over 10 minus 13 over 10. And that boils down to negative 6 plus negative 13. Since negative 6 and negative 13 both hold the same sign, we are just going to take them and add them. So what does that mean or what does it look like? It's going to be 6 and 13 is negative 19 over 10. This is an improper fraction, so we have to rewrite it negative. How many 10s go into 19? 1. There's 9 left over out of 10. So here is your final answer. We're now going to take a look at example D. Notice that D and E are now uh, decimals. So just remember your integer rules. When the signs are different, we're going to subtract, and we keep the sign of the larger integer. How are we going to solve 1.3 plus negative 3.4? Well, since the signs are different, Since the signs are different, we're going to subtract the two numbers and get 2.1. And our final answer is negative 2.1 because this here, the negative 3.4, gives me a greater absolute value than 1.3. So remember, if they were positives, if this were just negative 3 and this were 1, there's more negatives than there are positives. Okay, and here we're taking a look at example E. And um, notice it says negative 1.9 minus 0.8. So what we need to do is rewrite the problem as negative 1.9 plus negative 8. Remember, this minus becomes a plus, and this um, 8 tenths becomes negative 8 tenths. And since both of the signs are exactly the same, we're able to just add up the two decimals together. Remember, when you add decimals, line up the decimal place. And here's how we set up the problem. Okay, we set it up just like this. 1.9 plus 0.8, we get 2.7. So our final solution is negative 2.7. Since both of, the, both of the signs are the same, keep the sign negative. Uh, we're going to skip these number line questions. <clears throat> so how to add and subtract rational numbers. The one thing that's going to be a little new for all of you is to rewrite the problem when you have your life denominator to write what's happening in the numerator. For example, we're all used to doing 4 and then minus 1, but since our numbers are going to be a mix of integers, positive and negatives, we need to get into the habit of taking our numerators and jamming it into 1, like you see here. And for this example, I know it looks silly, but, like I said, once we move into the bigger problems, we're going to need to set it up this way. So here's another example. Negative 1 over 3 plus 1 over 6. Um, and those of you that are still struggling with fractions, uh, we do need to find a common denominator, which would be 6. Uh, if we count in a pattern or, or multiples, we get 3, 6, 9, 
and then 6 would be 6. So there's our common denominator. So this stays 1 over 6. 3 times 2 gives me 6, so 1 times 2 is 2. So you're going to notice when I show you the next set of fractions that it's going to say negative 2 over 6. That's because we are looking at the equivalent fraction now. <clears throat> so negative 2 over 6 plus 1 over 6. We're going to mash it into one whole fraction. Common denominator, 6. Numerator is negative 2 plus 1. Final answer can look like this. Negative 1 over 6 or negative 1 over 6. Notice that the negatives either in the numerator or off to the left. Either way is okay, because once there's a negative, the whole entire problem is negative. <clears throat> so in this example, we're going to add some rational numbers. I want to direct your attention to the study tip here. Um, if you notice, in the problem that we're working on with today, uh, we have negative 8 over 3 plus 5 over 6. So our denominators are 3 and 6. Um, if I take a look at 8 over 3 and 5 over 6, the common denominator, again, between 3 and 6 is going to be 6. 3 times 2 is 6, so 8 times 2 is 16. And since here the denominator is the same, the numerator stays the same. So when you look when you look at the problem here, um, we're going to rewrite the problem as negative 16 over 6, which is this fraction here. This was negative. Plus 5 over 6. Okay, so we're rewriting the problem using the common denominator. Next, we are going to combine the two fractions with one denominator, since it's 6, and the numerator is negative 16 over 5. All right, the stuff you see in blue are the steps and the thinking that we're completing. Now, in this step here, we're actually taking negative 16 plus 5. Since the signs are different, we're going to subtract. Um, and those of you that are still stuck on making mixed uh, improper fractions into mixed numbers. I'm going to show you how to do that real quick. We're going to take 11 divided by 6. 6 goes into 11 one time. There's 5 left over. So 6 goes into 11 one whole time. There are 5 left over out of 6. So 1 and 5 over 6 negative. Okay? So if I take a look at these rational numbers, these are now decimals. So what I want to do here is realize that my signs are different. So that means I'm going to subtract them. I'm going to take 7.62 and I'm going to subtract 4.05 or negative 4 and 5 hundredths. Um, I borrow from the 6, make that a 5, borrow the 2 and make it a 12, I get 7. I'm not sure why this keeps going back and forth. Um, 5 minus 0 is 5. 7 minus 4 is 3. So I need to take a look and see which one of these two numbers gives me a higher absolute value. And this is positive. It's the sign that I'm going to take. So my final sum is 3 and 57 hundredths. All right, we're going to um, take a minute here, write these four examples down. Um, as soon as you write them down, pause the video, <clears throat> and I will go through the solutions at this point. Please make sure you try these on your own before you go through the answers. So number one, if we notice our denominators are different, so we need to find our common denominator and also notice that the signs are different so between 4 and 8 we want to find our common denominator so count by 4 4 8 12 16 this is where having your multiplication chart will come in useful 8 16 24 
All right, we want to find the smallest possible number, which is 8. So common denominator of 8 Uh, 4 times 2 gives us 8, so 1 times 2 is 2. 8 times 1 is 8, so 1 times negative 7 is negative 7. So what we're going to do here is continue the steps that I've just taught you. Our common denominator is 8, and my numerator is negative 7 plus 2. Negative 7 plus 2. From here, we decide if we add these two numbers or subtract them. Since the signs are different, we'll subtract 7 from 2 and get a final answer of negative 5. So the answer to number 1 is negative 5 over 8. Alright, now let's move on to number 2. Uh, we have 20 over 3 and negative 6 and 1 third. So it's easiest, I believe, if we make everything improper. So negative 6 and 1 third will become 6 times 3 is 18 plus 1 is 19. It will become negative 19 over 3. We're going to add to that 20 over 3. We're going to write the numerator over one denominator. So negative 19 plus 20. Since my signs are different, I'll be subtracting, and I'll get an answer of 1 over 3. 20 minus 19. Let's take a look at example number 3. In example 3, I have two decimals that are both negatives. So since they're both negative numbers, I'll be able to take the two numbers, add them, and keep the sign negative. Remember, when we add decimals, we line up the decimal point. You could add a zero here if you wish. Let's add them up. Five and zero is five. Three and one is four. Eight plus four is 12. If we go back to the original question. Since this number and this number are negatives, we keep the sign and we add the numbers. So the final solution is negative 12 and 45 hundredths. And for example number four, if you notice the signs are different, so I'm going to take the two numbers, take their absolute values, and subtract them. So I'm going to take the bigger value, 15.3, and subtract 12.5. So what I'm going to do here, since um, I can't do 3 minus 5, I borrow, make this a 4. 13, 13 minus 5, decimal point down, 4 minus 2, and 1 minus 1 cancels out. So now I need to take a look at these two numbers and ask myself which one of them gives me a higher absolute value. Since it's the positive number, my answer is 2.8. All right, we just have a few more examples, um, three more to be specific, and we're done. We can skip over this one. Uh, let's take a look uh, for number seven. <clears throat> Since we have the same denominator, I can use three. My numerator is one minus negative one. Remember, minus means to add the opposite, so it's really saying one plus one which has a result of 2 over 3. Okay, please be sure you're writing all these examples down. You will need them for class. Um, I am always assuming that you will write your notes down. For example number 8, um, we are going to first find a common denominator between 3 and 6, and we have done this one a few times. Um, and we're also going to make this first um, fraction mixed number an improper fraction. So 3 times 3 is 9, plus 1 is 10, so 10 over 3 minus 5 over 6. Now I'm going to find common denominators, which is 6 
3 times 2 gives me 6, so 10, negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. Okay, common denominator is 6. My numerators are negative 20 minus 5. Remember, minus means to add the opposite. So we get negative 20 plus negative 5 all over 6. Since both signs are the same, I get negative 25 over 6. And now I'm just going to rewrite this as a mixed number. And I get the following setup. 6 goes into 25 4 times. 24 minus, I get 1. So I get a final answer of negative 4. There's 1 left over out of 6. So my final answer is negative 4 and 1 over 6. And for the last one, let's make them improper. The four, 2 times 4 is 8, plus 1 is 9, so I get 9 over 2 minus 4 times 5 is 20, plus 1 is 21, so I get 21 over 4. Now I'm going to find a common denominator, which is 4. 2 times 2 is 4, so 9 times 2 is 18. And this one stays since the denominator never changed. Now we are going to write this as one fraction. I get 18 minus 21. Remember, minus means to add the opposite. So I am going to get 18 plus negative 21 all over 4. My signs are different. I'm going to subtract 21 minus 18. I get an answer of negative 3 over 4. Why negative? Because this gives me a bigger absolute value than this. All right, guys. Good job in hanging in there. You've completed lesson 2.2. Bring your notes to class and complete your assessment.